On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to the Nightwise.com video blog, where today I am going to show you a little bit about Ubuntu 18.04. I've been experimenting a little bit uh, the last couple of days with my um, old iMac and some old computers, taking a new and fresh look at Ubuntu. I've been away from the Ubuntu desktop for a while because I had other uh, obligations like work and stuff. So I reformatted my uh, Dell XPS 13 into Windows. Now, because of some European governmental laws, I can't really use that system anymore because it doesn't support uh, full disk encryption. I don't have the right Windows license for that. And I need that in order to use confidential data for my clients. So, what do you do? Well, you have to, I mean, for legality's sake, get rid of Windows X, Windows 10 Home Edition. And there's a new 18.04 distribution coming out, so why not install it on your Dell XPS 13? And that's what I did here today. Um, I am uh, have the 2017, 2016 version of the uh, Dell XPS 13, the first one that came with Ubuntu and I have recently reinstalled 18.04. The version that I'm uh, taking is the daily build, but since there is an absolute feature freeze since April 16th, this is the version that will probably hit the ISOs come the end of April. Uh, so I decided to go for the install here on the Dell XPS 13. It's an i5. Let me just see here that you can see the settings, that you know what specs we're running. So you got it, it's an 8 gigabyte i5, 5200 CPU, 2.2 gigahertz, uh, sporting a 265 gigabyte SSD. Fantastic little computer, and I was incredibly surprised to see that Ubuntu 18.04 was so mature. I have been running 16.04, and I gotta say the first versions of 16.04 on the Dell uh, XPS 13, even if they shipped, they, they shipped OAM with these things, didn't really work uh, out of the box, and I had quite a bit of tweaking and stuff to do before I got it working. But that all seems to be working now, and here you have it, Dell XPS 13 running Ubuntu 18.04. I went for the absolute um, minimal install, which is an option in 18.04, which only gives you a web browser, the terminal, and all the hardware drivers that you need, which for me was fine. No media player, no office software. I could do that afterwards, and I could configure my own system just the way I wanted it. I have uh, always been annoyed with the fact that uh, I had applications like Rhythmbox and Shotwell and God knows what that I didn't really use eating up disk space, uninstalling them took a lot of time, and I wish there was another way, but now there is. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you to through the applications that I use the most and that I have reinstalled or installed just after I did the 1804 install. Now, taking a look at 1804, you immediately see that this baby is GNOME. It looks a little bit like Unity, but if I would go to the settings menu, and the launcher is no longer at the top here, but at the bottom. Or I can just launch it by hitting the super key, and I would just start typing uh, settings. Um, I can actually tweak that dock to be wherever I want it to be, even on the bottom, giving it a nice Mac OS X look. The only downside to that is that this launcher button, which gives you an overview of all the applications that you've installed, doesn't really move. It is not something that you can move to the other side, uh, so it just kind of stays right there. But that is kind of the only thing that annoys me. For the rest, it is very well done. Now, for the Unity lover's sake, I'm going to leave it here on the left-hand side, and I'll go through the applications that I've installed and that I use every day. So, world, the world begins with the terminal. I have uh, currently two terminals open. One is installing my RetroPy, and one is an open SSH session that I have to one of my servers. Um, I'll get back to this because I do use quite a few commands in the terminal, um, but of course my browser uh, is the most important application right next, right after my terminal and my file. So my terminal, you can also launch it with uh, Control Alt T to launch a new window is right up there. 
file manager is of course right next to it they did a little bit of a makeover on the file manager you can see it right here not a lot of files there yet I still need to you know put something on the hard drive and then there of course are my browsers I try to use Firefox as much as possible with the whole Facebook thing I've really started to think about privacy and what that means to me and whether or not it would be better to use an open source browser unless instead of a proprietary one so hence Firefox should I still need the Google Plex verse or the Google verse I still have Chromium web browser available which is you know like Google Chrome but then the open source version offering you all the functionalities of Google Chrome and you can also run all the add-ins that you want to use for privacy's sake I also use the Tor browser which allows me to kind of surf anonymously should I want to and as you can see I haven't run it yet it's still downloading its first version I don't have I have a, a pretty good Wi-Fi connection here so that's always nice to see then there's of course a little bit of social media and I have found uh, Corbird to be a fantastic little Twitter application there you see the picture that I just posted about my Dell XPS 13 gives you the ability to get replies to take a look at conversations um, let me just you know do a live reply to Kevin here you're on my video blog dude and uh, it's actually quite a quite a cool little application it's light it gives you everything that you need to do handle your tweets your direct messages and whatever you want uh, I really kinda like that one and then there is of course the text editor now I have installed uh, LibreOffice suite on this laptop but I hardly use it the most uh, the things I do the most here are basically text editing and a great editor which is not available in the repository is of course Atom Atom is great if you're a programmer but it's also great if you want a distraction free interface to you know do some typing or handle config files I've found Atom to be far superior to applications like get it and what have you next up on the list if we're talking about having a little bit of focus is focus writer which is an ideal application if you want to blog Tor browser is kinda done now um, Focus Writer gives you the ability to write without having any distractions whatsoever, which really helps when you're trying to write an article. By just hovering your mouse over to the top, you can quit it and you go right back to your desktop, which of course has another wallpaper. That's a little secret I'll show you. That's an application called Variety. Variety lets you scroll through new wallpapers every so and so five minutes or ten minutes here it's every five minutes let's just put that to 15 and it immediately fetches online wallpapers and puts them on your background now I have unsubscribed from all the preferences that are um, kinda recommended by um, by variety and I've gone for uh, three great reddits that offer wallpapers like wallpaper cyberpunk and starship porn great application keeps your desktop nice and fresh does automatic refreshes and if you don't like the desktop you can just manually click next and you'll go to the next one and the next one um, after focus writer we are uh, go to a little bit of music and I really like Clementine and I like Clementine for one thing Clementine gives you the ability to stream music from all kinds of locations even your Google Drive or your or your Dropbox your OneDrive you can do podcasts whatever you want to but what I really like is that you have a connection to Soma FM which offers you quite a few streams and there is this great stream called Mission Control. Let me see if I can find it, which is ambient music mixed with the sound tapes from NASA miss missions. So it's it's really cool. It's really chilly. Um, I suggest you just try it out. I'm not gonna play it for you just yet. Google might go insane. Um, but that's a great background music for me. Really geeky. Then uh, there is VLC, which of course is the Swish, the Swiss, Swish, not not Swish, Swiss butter knife to play about everything that has uh, a video extension, and G Potter, which I use to download my podcasts. 
Then I have two applications that I'm using right now. One of them is Simple Screen Recorder, which lets you record screen uh, captures and audio in a very decent quality. And this application called GUVC View. This is basically just a live window of your webcam, as you're seeing, you know, right here. Uh, and you can just pop that into your screen, giving you a nice overlay like we are doing right now. These two, really nice to use. And of course, I, before I forget, if I do some audio recording, I always do that with Audacity, great audio recorder. I love to manage my ebooks, so I have Calibre on here. I have quite a um, extensive ebook library on my NAS, and I re regularly copy it over to my laptop. So I just have my books with me, and you can also turn Calibre into a web server. Uh, so you can, you know, surf to it with your Kindle or your iPad, and just you know download the books straight to your e-reader or your tablet. For transferring files, uh, a good FTP and SFTP server, of course, is FileZilla, which, you know, everybody kind of uses, and uh, I like it a lot. Um, for downloads, uh, if I need to download a distribution or God knows what, uh, Transmission is my place to go to. It's a very simple um, torrent client. If I want to uh, do some editing of uh, pictures, that I took with my camera, I use um, Digicam, which is quite an advanced photo editor. Um, there is, of course, also the GIMP, but I have found the GIMP to be a little bit above what I need out of it, so Digi Digicam is one of the apps that I use on a regular basis. There's one chat app not installed here. Of course, I have Telegram. There is, of course, the uh, nightwise.com chat room on Telegram where you can hang out and talk to all the nightwise.com fans, really like Telegram. And I'm also going to have to install the Signal desktop client, which allows me to use that. In the beginning, I also talked to you guys about some command line applications, because one of the things that you haven't seen yet is my mail and stuff. Well, basically, I do all of these in the command line. Right now, I am SSH'd into uh, my Raspberry Pi, in my network, which is running all of these applications in the background for demonstration use. So this is my IRC client. This, this is IRSSI, which is a great command line IRC client. Let's see if we can um, go to the next window. This is Alpine, my email client. Uh, I use it to read my Gmail and answer my uh, emails uh, on Gmail via the command line. Then I have, um, I've got to check here what the name again is, Twitch. Twitch is a command line Twitter client, which I have set on a watch command. So every 10 seconds, this list with my latest tweets gets refreshed and I can look at my tweets uh, via the command line or update my Twitter via the command line also, should I want to, or if I'm not using Corberg. Let me see, what else is there? This is mm, just a terminal window that I have open. This is WordRiner. This is a command, command line text editor, which still has, you know, quite a few tricks up its sleeve, uh, which is a, a great little program to just simply edit text and um, to, to, you know, uh, get little pieces of text written without any distractions. Then I have, let me see, which is the next window? Oops, kind of stuck here. Oops, I seem to have lost the connection. Oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, I have Ranger, which is a file manager from the command line, and Ranger can help you navigate through whatever you want to navigate through and take a look at whatever you want to take a look at. For example, these are all of the podcasts that I've downloaded uh, on my server. And I can just quickly go through this and, um, you know, take a look at what I want to do. I can copy, I can paste, I can do whatever I would like to. And uh, that's also a great uh, little terminal application that I like to use. Then there is RTV uh, or Reddit via the uh, command line 
Uh, I love my dose of Reddit. Um, you can go to any Reddit, like for example, command line, which is a subreddit, and it will get you, uh, get, will show you all of the uh, posts that there are, all of the comments that are listed, and whatever you want to take a look at. Uh, for, you know, I'm not really having a great uh, bandwidth here, but uh, so you can see, this is the post. These are the comments. And I really love uh, taking a look at uh, Reddit this way because it doesn't really have a lot of distractions and I can still read all of the favorite Reddits that I want, post and uh, comment. I think we're back to RSSI. Did I forget one? Yes, I did. Oh, here it is. Newsboiter, which is my RSS reader which I use to read RSS articles. Now it's great for just skimming the headlines because if you really want to open up an article uh, you need to do so in um, in a text-based browser which is not always you know convenient but most of the streams that are there just kinda let you wander around and read the article without a lot of distractions. And um, that's actually it. The only thing I still have up there is TeamViewer to remote control some of my systems. And that's it. A cool little install on Ubuntu 18.04 and my list of applications that I use to let tech work for me. I'm very curious as to what your first impressions are with Ubuntu 18.04 and what your applications are that you've installed on it. Please, comments below and uh, we'll see what you find and uh, perhaps we'll learn something from each other. Until next time, this is Nightwise, signing off. Goodbye.